Hi, Cass. Can you hear us? I can. All right. Awesome. We can hear you great. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. We're going to take questions. We'll get in as many questions as we can during our allotted time. And to kick us off, we'll take a question from Mark Garrow with PRN. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, thank you, everybody. Congratulations, Kaz, on getting in. Uh, just your thoughts here um, on an up and down duel, right? You're out, you're out, you're out, you're in. You know, just, just your, <laughs> what were your emotions? Oh, I, I tried to keep my emotions as possible. Uh, I like to think of myself as a pretty calm driver, but I'll tell you, that was, <laughs> that was the most stressed I've ever been in a race. I think as a driver, naturally, you you're most calm when you feel like you have something in your control. Super speedways are already stretching that as far as what all is in your control. And then when we're a lap down and, and we've got damage um, from an incident that, that started behind us, um, then you're really out of control and you're just, you're hoping for, for something to work out in your favor. Um, I, I knew who we were racing against. I knew that, that what happened was possible. Um, so I, I tried to, to keep everybody in college racing boosted up in high spirits and know that, that we weren't out of it yet. And, and evidently that, that was in fact the case. So really proud of everybody at Colleague Racing. They brought an excellent car uh, that has gotten a little bit beat up tonight, but uh, I'm sure we'll be able to get it fixed or, or pull out an equally good car for Sunday. Um, but yeah, the, the Hyper Ice Chevy was good. It did everything I asked it to do early in the race before the incident. Um, so I, I'm, I'm really optimistic about our chances for Sunday. This wasn't how we wanted to get into the race. Obviously, we wanted to be able to go up there, finish up front and do it that way. But we'll take it however we can get it. And we'll have to do the upfront part uh, on Sunday. All right. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. Okay, we're going to take our next question from Davey Siegel. Go ahead, Davey. <laughs> Hey, Cass, so when you're involved in the, in the wreck there, I mean, what's going through your mind? Are you saying, all right, that's it, we're done? Are you trying to get the car repaired? Like, what's going through your personal mind there? Well, uh, what was going through my mind was just trying not to hit anything. Um, you know, I think now that I think of it, that was the very first time I've been uh, involved in an incident here at Daytona. So I didn't really know what walls were going to be coming at me from where. So I was focused on locking down the brake pedal trying to minimize the damage. Um, and, and obviously we had a lot of flat tires, so we limped it back around to pit road. We went a lap down. Um, that was just part of it. But uh, like I said, I, I personally, I'm an eternal optimist. That's just how I am, even right till the last second. Um, so I, I knew that we still had a shot. I knew things needed to come our way a little bit, but um, I, I certainly didn't count us out. And uh, I still knew to, to execute to the best of, of our ability with what we could control and uh, hope that, that that ended up putting us in a position to make the race. And, um, and here we are. I'm thrilled. And you said that the car basically was doing anything you wanted it to do. You obviously know how to win at Daytona. So how did you feel in the draft and how do you think it's going to translate to Sunday? I felt good. I mean, I, I certainly have, have a lot to learn. I mean, these cup guys are top notch out here on the super speedways. They've probably got about a hundred times as many uh, races under their belt as I do on, on a super speedway. So I was definitely learning a lot out there, but felt like the car maneuvered well and, and did what I needed it to do. And, um, and on Sunday, if we can, if we can survive till the end of the race, which is a tall order in itself, but if we can, uh, I feel like our, our colleague racing machine will do what I needed to do. And, uh, and be able to go up there and contend. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks. Okay, we're gonna take our next question from Mike Solarte. Go ahead, Mike. Thanks very much, Kaz. Uh, you know, you say you're the eternal optimist and you still kept your, your, your thoughts in there, but did David Reagan's name pop into your head just because you needed him to be the highest finishing guy and to, to guarantee your spot in there and the guys in the broadcast actually brought it up. So, I mean, is David Reagan getting a fruit basket from you or anything like that uh, before <laughs> Sunday? Uh, well, I, I always am. I always have been a David Reagan fan, actually. The very first NASCAR race that I, I was able to get into the infield for was back in, I want to say about 2011 in New Hampshire. Um, David Reagan gave my parents and I pit passes, and I actually got to sit on his uh, number six Roush Fenway box. That was the coolest experience of my life. First time I got to see up close um, from the infield, a NASCAR race. So uh, he and I have known each other for a long time. I talked to him before the race. He kind of knew the situation. Um, and obviously he has to do what's best for his team and his manufacturer. But 
Um, I, I can tell you from behind the pack when I couldn't hold the draft, um, I, was, I was rooting for David to, to get up there and see if, if he could make some waves and, and beat those other two guys. And um, ultimately, um, in a roundabout way, with, with some action in between, that, that isn't what ended up happening. So I'm super pumped for David to be in the race. Uh, definitely thrilled for, for us and our team to be in. Uh, I think it's, it's an unbelievably strong group to, to race against on Sunday. This was probably the hardest year to make this race in recent history. Um, so I, I'm really proud to be a part of that and, and excited to see what we can do from here. Thanks very much. Good luck, Cindy. Thank you. Okay, our next question will come from Lewis Torres. Go ahead. Thank you. Well, well done, Cass. You've just made your first Daytona 500. How great is it to, you mentioned the tough competition because you have like Gregson, you have those guys that didn't make it. How gratifying is it to make it and start at the back row alongside with your old buddy, Cindric from back when? <laughs> uh, it, it's great. And obviously we knew coming into it, this was going to be a really hard year to make the race. Excellent competition, great teams, great drivers trying to make this race without charters. So we knew it was a tall order, um, but I will say now being able to breathe a sigh of relief that we are in, um, it, it makes it that much sweeter knowing that, that we beat some, some really incredible teams and drivers to get into this race. This, this was absolutely an accomplishment to get to Sunday. Um, so I'm, I'm already satisfied with that. We're starting last, so we have only one direction to go. So from here to me personally, uh, on a personal note, um, it, it's just everything from here is, is a bonus. And that's the way I like to race. The, the last couple of years, as you guys know, I've, I've been racing part-time, really want a full-time opportunity eventually. So for me, just to be at the racetrack, everything I'm able to do from there is a bonus. Um, but watching too many races from, from my house has, has definitely made me that much more grateful when I'm at the racetrack. So um, to now be at the racetrack and to be there on a Sunday for the Daytona 500, it doesn't get much better than that. So uh, I know I'm gonna be having a lot of fun no matter how it goes, but uh, we'll certainly put our best foot forward and see if we can do some something incredible from there. That's how I approached the, the, the only other cup race I've done before um, last year here on the road course. Uh, I was just thrilled to be there and honored to be chosen to drive the car and figured, let's see what I can do from here. And it was a pretty good day. So I, hopefully we can have a, a, a little bit of a, a reenactment of that on Sunday, that'd be really cool. Okay, we're going to take our next question from Dustin Albino. Go ahead, Dustin. Yeah, Kaz, congrats on making it. Um, it looks like there's a lot of damage to your car. Are you going to a backup? That's a great question. I would love to know the answer to that right now. Honestly, I in the excitement, I got out of the car and talked to Chris Rice and Matt Colling, and uh, I didn't even go look at the at of our car. So I'm not quite sure what we're working with. I'm going to find that out tonight. But um, either way, you know, Colleague Racing certainly uh, brought a good backup car and, and are more than capable to fix this car if that's what they, they choose to do. So I feel like we're going to have a good piece on Sunday to, to be able to race with no matter what. So um, I'll, I'll leave that up to the guys who, who really know what they're doing on the car. Thank you. All right. Our next question will come from Jacob Seelman. Go ahead, Jacob. Thanks, Amanda Kaz. Uh, congratulations on qualifying for the Great American Race. Uh, how, how big a moment? Obviously, we saw Colleague Racing race their way in last year, but this is part of, uh, of a bigger picture for you guys this season. How important is this race and getting you know, that part-time program for them off on the right foot? Really important. I mean, not only is this important for me, uh, career-wise, sponsorship-wise, and uh, opportunity wise, but it's big for colleague. They're planning on running a handful of cup races this year. Um, not just this one race, like, like they did last year. So being able to get in and especially now with the format, as far as which cars are, are able to enter each race when there isn't quality. Um, this, this is a huge day for us and, and a huge day for the organization as a whole. And, um, I, I think it's been the worst kept secret that, that they have aspirations to get to the cup series and racing it full time down the road and try to be a multi-car team down the road. So this is the, the first small step towards a, a big picture. And, and I know it's a, it's a victory for, for everybody at the team. Does this open the door for you possibly you know, to, to run some more races beyond the 500? 
I, I mean, I absolutely am going to run more races beyond the 500 with them as far as uh, how many that's still up in the air. We can, we can add as many as we want as a part-time team in the cup series. So that's the beauty of it. This, this definitely goes a long way. I would think for, for helping market our team and, and hopefully be able to attract sponsorship and be able to run as many of these races as, as we can. Um, we got AJ in the car for a few races starting next weekend. So this is good for all of us as a whole. Thank you, bud. Good luck on Sunday. Thank you. Okay, our next question will come from Jeff from Empire Sports. Go ahead, Jeff. Thank you, Matt. Kaz, congratulations on this. So my, qu my question to you is, last year you talked about how great it was to run the Daytona Road Course and how honored you were that Mr. Childress, uh, Mr. Childress put you in the, in the three car for that event. Was there anything you could have taken from the Road Course event to play it into the Super Speedway event tonight? You know, the biggest thing, and it, and it matters a lot on a play track, is confidence. You know, I, I would say a, a year ago, I'm not sure how I would have felt about going out there in the cup field and uh, feeling like I, I deserve to be there and feel like I'm not going to get pushed around out there. Um, so not only did, did it definitely boost my confidence, but I'm sure it definitely gained some respect of, of the competitors out there. So I, I, I now feel like, all right, on Sunday, we, we raced our way in we deserve to be here. I feel like I can go out there and, and race with a clear head, knowing that, that us as a team and, and me personally, we, we deserve to be doing this here. Um, and that's big. And, and frankly, towards making the moves that need to be made late in the race to get a good finish, confidence is key. So uh, I, I do think that that's the biggest thing I'll take, take from it. In terms of the road course driving, it's not going to help me much for Sunday. <laughs> Absolutely. But uh, hey, congratulations and uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks. Okay, we're going to take our final question from Joe. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, thank you. Kaz, congratulations on making it to the 500. I know when you're in the 500, it's going to be big. You, colleague racing, doing the 500. Does the mindset now shift to where you're focusing on race setup, looking at past race history, stuff like that for the 500 now? Definitely. Uh, I'm, I'm excited that we'll get the opportunity to practice on Saturday. Um, that, that'll be really helpful for us. And I mean, tonight was my very first time feeling this package in a cup car in general on a super speedway. So uh, I definitely learned a lot already and, and we'll continue to learn on Saturday when we practice some drafting. Uh, but we can now shift our focus to a race setup. I, I've tried not to, uh, up to this point in the weekend, think too much about Saturday practice and race trim because uh, I knew that we had to, to get past a hurdle just to get to Saturday practice and I didn't want to jinx it by thinking about it or talking about it. Uh, now that we're, we're over the hump of the duel, now we can shift our focus to race trim on Saturday. Uh, I know Matt Swiderski and the whole college crew have, have some great ideas for what to do for the race and uh, like I said, I already liked our car tonight so um, I, I feel like they'll, they'll be able to build even more comfort into it um, to, to be raceable and, and allow me to make the moves that I need to make late. And with the time racing today, I know, especially before the wreck, was there particular drivers that you found you were working really well with, especially for drafting? That's going to help with practice and the 500? Yeah, I mean, I, I, was, I was really pleased with all the Chevys that I was around. Um, definitely worked well with me, and I, I felt like I worked well with them. Um, we, we all jumped in a chat earlier today and kind of discussed our, our game plan for the race. And that, that was the first time I've ever been a, a, a part of anything like that. I actually, I, I unmuted my mic and, and turned on my camera and uh, jumped into the conversation, introduced myself to everybody because um, I'm sure there's a couple guys out there that know me, but there were far more that didn't know me. Um, and, and I was hoping that they'd be my ally and, and that I'd be able to be there. So I started with an introduction to them. Um, and, and it definitely seemed like everybody worked well together tonight. So uh, I feel like we can, uh, we can take that into Sunday, hopefully have some more of that working well together. And um, as many of us as possible uh, to be undamaged and, and be around at the end of the race on Sunday so that we can, we can uh, hopefully get a bow tie in victory lane. Thank you very much. Best of luck. And thank you, Amanda. Yes, Kaz, um, that is all the questions we have. Thank you so much and congratulations again. Thank you very much.